Swinging a fly bar to left field deep. Way back. Way back. This ball is gone. A walk-off home run. Newport Gulls win it here in the 11th. This is the Newport Gulls pregame show, live from Cardines Field in Newport, Rhode Island. Random sets, kicks, and deals. Swinging to the straight three. The Newport Gulls are 2009 East Division champions. Coming up, interviews, stats, standing, lineups, and a whole lot more. Swinging a high drive to deep right. Oh, is this ball crushed? Way back and gone. Joey Manning with a towering shot. Swinging a high drive to deep left. And you can forget about it. Cal Conley with his third home run of the game. Stay tuned. The Newport Gulf pregame show starts now on the NECBL Broadcast Network. In his eighth season covering Newport Gulf baseball, here is play-by-play broadcaster Nick Lima. Hello and welcome once again to Cardings Field here in Newport, Rhode Island as the Gulls get set to take on the Mystic Schooners in the fourth matchup between these two teams and this nightcap of the doubleheader as Newport continues their eight-game season series against Eastern Division opponent Mystic. Game one in the books, game two coming up here tonight as the Gulls host the Mystic Schooners. I'm Nick Lima here at Cardings Field. This Newport Gulls doubleheader baseball will continue next with the pregame show right here on the NECBL Broadcast Network. Welcome back here at Cardines Field as our pregame show continues. Now time for the Newport Gulls Insider, joined by Newport Gulls Director of Game Day Operations, George Bissell. George, how are you this afternoon? I'm doing great, Nick. Great to be here. Thanks for having me on. Game one in the books. Game two to follow here between the Newport Gulls and the Mystic Schooners. It's so, so different with the two teams in the Eastern Division playing eight games instead of six. They also play each other four more times this season, including tomorrow. It's sort of like a three-game playoff series here. Oh, you're right, Nick. These two teams don't have a lot of history together. They met only twice last year. Uh, a couple exciting games, though, last year. Tim Keeney had a walk-off home run and extra innings for the Gulls. So uh, not a lot of history here, but they're going to see a lot of each other in the next couple of weeks, as you mentioned. And it uh, should be a great series. Obviously, Mystic right now just 2-15. and 15. They're going to have to battle back in the Eastern Division. But there's still a lot of time, and there's a lot of games in July. And uh, we'll see if they can make a run at this. George, uh, you were the broadcaster for Newport last season. You saw both Daniel Wright and John Brzezinski pitch. Let's go back to last night. Newport's big 15-5 to win over the New Bedford Bay Sox, who are chasing them in the ACBL East. That was a very important win and a crucial moment here in the midpoint of the season. And Brzezinski was sensational. Five innings, just one earned run on the mound. All right, I think that's the type of effort that the Gulls have expected from Brzezinski. He was an ACBL All-Star last season. He started the year 4-0. Uh, really a solid pitcher. You know what you're going to get out of him. A lot of strikeouts. He's going to... I'll work around traffic on the base paths when it happens. Uh, solid kid out of Seton Hall, and that's exactly what you're looking for from Przinski. And I think the offense is what really came through last night. Anytime you rack up 20 hits and score 15 runs, you expect to win the game. So it becomes easier as a pitcher to go out with that type of lead, just throw strikes, pitch to contact, get, that, get outs. And uh, it was great to see the offense come through in support of Przinski. Jeff Melillo continues to swing a hot bat, and this is second summer in Newport, as Chuck Paper has already started to call him one of the team captains. But uh, up and down the entire lineup, every Newport goal who started last night had at least one hit. Many had multiple hits, including John Norwood. He's a triple shy of the cycle, as well as Casey Coffin, who's been sensational in the leadoff spot all summer for Newport. He has appeared on base now in 14 consecutive games. Well, Nick, you mentioned the three guys at the home runs last night, Coffin, Melillo, and Norwood. But you also touched on it, seven guys with multiple hit efforts last night, and that's huge. Anytime you get that, every single guy in the lineup swinging the bat well. Uh, the credit has to go to the coaching staff and, and these guys. Uh, hitting coach Al Leva's out here. You see him every day. They're out here hours before the game working out, working on swings, making the adjustments. Uh, and that's key, and it's shown up in the stats. And uh, this team's just clicking right now in all cylinders. We've also seen the pitching get better and the defense improving in the last couple of days as well. So uh, really it's all coming together for the Gulls, as you would expect in July from this team. Tonight in the nightcap of this uh Double header here, two seven inning contests. The Newport Colts set another returner from 2011 in Daniel Wright. Uh, Daniel Wright's an outstanding pitcher, a righty from Arkansas State. Uh, teammates with Jacob Lee, who set the ERA record for the Gulls last season. And I think he's carried that experience he gained last year into the starting role this year. Wright was used as a reliever out of the pen for most of last season. He was a key setup guy uh, for pitching coach Kevin Long and manager Mike Coombs. Uh, late in the season, when the Gulls had some injuries, he stepped into the starting rotation. They didn't miss a beat. He was outstanding, uh, providing some quality starts down the stretch. And that's what they're going to need from him tonight. 3-0 uh, and in the season already. And uh, the way he's pitching with that veteran type of savvy and experience, you can expect a solid start from him here in game two. 
George is director of game day operations. You manage a lot of the intricate aspects of behind the scenes baseball here at Cardines. What's it like for you uh, trying to get a double header off here at Cardines Field? What are the logistical challenges? What's different from a normal game? Well, you mentioned that it's different from a normal game in the sense that you're playing two. So it's everything starts earlier. you got to have the people in the right places. Uh, it breaks up the routine, and sometimes things fall by the wayside. You try and not let that happen. But uh, we're going to be good to go this afternoon. Obviously, game one, we were all set with that. Uh, rolling on into game two, it's turning the field over and uh, things like that. Getting ready for game two, the stadium's going to fill up, and uh, we'll be ready for that. No logistical challenge. The grounds crew, a couple of key staff members on vacation this week, and the, the Gulls veteran grounds crew and the largest volunteer grounds crew organizations probably in summer baseball nationwide. Uh, Newport has a big staff here who love coming to these games, but, you know, they need, need some time to themselves. And uh, you get your head groundskeeper, Dennis Halko, on vacation throughout the week. Talking about the grounds crew as well, they have to take care of the field and inclement weather. We've been lucky so far. We just did make up a, a rainout game from early in the season for the most part. We were dodging rain showers last night, never saw a drop. Everywhere around us got inundated. I think the, the weather was really lucked out for us here. I'm going to talk about both subjects. Yeah, I think we've been fortunate. Mother Nature's been kind to us. We've gotten a lot of games in this year. Uh, we've had a couple nights early in the season where just the field flooded earlier in the day and the sun didn't come out and it didn't dry. But the credit has to go to the grounds crew. They do an outstanding job. You mentioned Dennis Houck, our head groundskeeper, uh, grounds crew chief of Rick Lombardi. They do a great job. Russell Secor on the grounds crew as well. Um, we've got the, the players and the coaches. They've stepped up and rose to the occasion these last two days. But the 4th of July weekend, uh, we're missing a lot of people in the organization. Uh, it's an all-volunteer staff, so uh, any time they give us is we're really grateful for that. But we've had uh, Frank Holbrook and Tanner Kleberad doing the water on the field the last couple of days. Al Leva is going to be doing the lines here for game two. So uh, the veterans you know, aren't here tonight, but uh, the players and the coaches and the rest of our volunteers, they're, they're going to rise to the occasion. Newport Goals, Director of Game Day Operations, George Bissell. Thanks for joining us here in the pregame show. Good luck to the Goals tonight in Game 2. Thanks a lot, Nick. That's our pregame show coming up. It's the manager show with Newport Goals field manager Mike Coombs here on the NECBL Broadcast Network. Welcome back here at Cardinals Field. Now time for the manager show. Joined by Newport Goals manager Mike Coombs as the goal is getting set for Game 2 in this twin billing. Coach, thank you for joining us today. Hey, Nick. How you doing? Okay. Doing pretty well as uh, the Newport Goals get set to take on Mystic now for the fourth time in the season. Sort of a three-game series between uh, Newport and Mystic here. They'll be on the road again to face them tomorrow. It's like right. almost like a playoff series. Yeah, um, with those other two teams leaving, it's given us more opportunities to play each other. So uh, it is what it is. I know in pro ball, when I was in the Florida State League, I think we played each other about 20 times. And after a while, you get to know them. You get to know them pretty good. So... That's what it is. And, Coach, uh, the Newport Gulls uh, just on the second and third games here today of a 10-game stretch in nine days without an off day. And uh, that's what we expect here. It happens every season in the NECBL, but it's certainly a big adjustment for these players used to playing in the collegiate schedule in the spring. Yeah, it's uh, that's what it's all about is getting out there and playing every day, and that's what pro ball is like. you got to get out there and play every day. Daniel Wright getting the start here in game two for the Newport Gulls. Daniel's one of the league leaders in strikeouts. He also won the league leaders in wins. He's 3-0 in his three previous starts. Yeah, he's throwing the ball pretty good. Dan, uh, you know, he, uh, he knows how to pitch, and uh, he's got a good uh, catcher back there. Um, well, we've got two very good catchers in Matt Perry and uh, Jeff Malillo. So they're, they're very good, and they call good games. And, of course, it starts with the pitcher, and he's got a – He's got to throw it, want to throw it, and go from there. Coach, uh, looking back over the last couple of games, Newport scoring 30 runs between Sunday and Monday against Eastern Division opponents, 15-run performances both times, including a 20-hit performance here at Cardinals Field last night. Uh, you know, sometimes you get those big offensive games and you know you don't see them again for a couple of weeks. It's been very consistent with the Gulls. have been putting up a lot of runs from game to game and are now hitting over 300 as a team. Yeah, I don't like to dwell on that at all it's uh, my major concern is about the pitching you know because the hitting is like you said can come and go pitching uh, if you get it and it sticks and it stays there uh, then then you got some hitting it could be here today and gone tomorrow so uh, and nothing against these guys they, they do a great job swinging the bat but uh, you know you can go four for four one night and go for four the next and that's how this game of baseball is 
Someone who's very rarely going 0 for 4 is Casey Kaufman in the leadoff spot for Newport. Coming into today's doubleheader, he's appeared on base in 14 consecutive games as among the league leaders in consecutive games reached base and has been very good in the leadoff spot, including on Monday night when he was a triple shot of the cycle and had a three-run homer. Yeah, um, just uh, threw him in there. I kind of liked his makeup. Uh, he hits from the left side and... Uh, Watches the ball pretty well in BP. Sees, you know, so I, you know, went with that, and we stuck him in the one hole, and he's been there quite a bit. Coach, uh, the goal is making some Rasa moves over the last few days. As a couple players have moved on, a couple players who never showed up here were removed from the roster, and a couple players have been added. Uh, we saw one here on Friday night, Caleb Kellogg, and he threw out, came out and threw gas in the ninth inning. Yeah, Caleb. Uh, threw the ball very well, and um, hopefully uh, we'll see a lot more of that. We got a lefty coming in to the goals as well. Yeah, uh, Michael Johnson. Uh, pitched in this league a couple years and uh, went out to the Cape, did well there, and then uh, just got released, and uh, he's coming to us now. How's the injury report looking around the dugout right now? Is uh, uh, White still okay? Yeah, he's still in there. Somewhere in the dugout, but uh, he's not in the lineup yet. I mean, you've got to get him. we got to get him well. That's all. Everyone else pretty much healthy up and down? Uh, McKeithen's got a little bit of a uh, bruise in his, uh, I think it's throwing hand. But other than that, I think he'll be okay. I'll just give him the first game off. So Newport Coles manager Mike Coombs. Yeah, we had the first game. <laughs> <laughs> the Coast Manager, Mike Coombs, thanks for joining us here in the pregame show. Good luck here in Game 2 against Mystic and on the road the next couple of days. Thanks, Nick. That's our pregame visit with Newport Coles Manager, Mike Coombs. Newport Coles baseball is next as we play Game 2 of this doubleheader here on the NECBL Broadcast Network.